Hi guys, you might remember that I collected a stack of 7 Hi-Fi devices from the trash. What we can take off in this picture are the two Akai components on the bottom that were picked up for free from a lucky collector and the Akai turntable we already restored. We are also done with the Pioneer PL300 turntable that's on top of the stack in the next picture. What's left is a Pioneer SA508 amplifier and the TX608 tuner. Today we are fixing the SA508. I have tested the amp, it seems to be working so far, but let's have a closer inspection. The device is definitely not in a good shape. The speaker selector is stuck and I have to check if I can fix it or I need to get a replacement. All the other controls are operating fine. The toggle switches and knobs definitely need some attention, they really look bad. What's special about the components out of the time from Pioneer is a blue display. But as usual let's go for the restoration first and then learn a bit more about that particular Hi-Fi component. Best course of action will be to take the amp apart and it is hopefully not too much work to get the faceplate off to work on it. So let's remove the cover and have a look inside first. The speaker selector is definitely not moving, so let's take the faceplate off and get it out. The faceplate is holding in place from just four nuts which are behind some of the knobs and so we have to take off all the knobs and all the toggle switches and get onto them. That was surprisingly easy. Let's get out the switch and see if we can find the reason why it is not moving. So there's this little metal ball that moves from contact to contact and I thought it must be stuck. But when I checked it with my little screwdriver it was moving fine. What is probably stuck is the shaft that goes into the switch assembly. But I think we got here another WD-40 moment. While the WD-40 is hopefully doing its magic, we are taking care of the toggle switches. Most of the oxidization on the metal I should be able to remove is never dull. The top of the switches is quite rusty. So let's get some sandpaper and remove the rust. Alright, so we are done with the toggle switches, let's see how our speaker switch is doing.
To try to move it I installed it back in place and also put back on the knob. And it starts to move again. Not exactly easy in the beginning, but if I just keep it turning for a while it should be fine. I assume there was some old grease in the switch and the WD-40 made it soft again. Apply a little bit more on the back of the switch and I also spray some contact cleaner on the contacts itself. Getting displays super clean makes a huge difference on old hi-fi devices. That's the touch that can make an old device look new again. And what could be better for the job than some isopropyl? peel? Definitely super clean now. Now it's time to get on the harder cleaning job. The knobs and the face split are in pretty bad shape. I will try some never dull on one of the knobs and if that works well I will carefully try it on the faceplate. What I definitely don't want is to remove some of the labeling on it. The risk is low but you can't be too careful. Ok, so the treatment with the Nevertal made a pretty big difference, but there's one remaining concern. There is some oxidization on the knobs and it seems it's not possible to remove it and I feel I have to live with it. This also seems to work pretty fine for the faceplate as expected. To not damage the little window for the display, I decided to put two CD covers under the faceplate. It took me about 15 minutes to get the faceplate nice and shiny again and I am sure you also noticed that I cleaned the window for the display with isopropyl. The next step now is to clean the knobs and the toggle switches. My first attempt on the knob with Neverdal was partially successful but there is still something left on the knob that requires some harsher treatment. So I decided to better use ultrasol metal polish for the toggle switches and the knobs instead. The oxidization on the knobs is something that can't be removed, but we can get them super clean. I went through all of them from small to big. This was a lot more work than the faceplate, especially the toggle switches were a bit fiddly to work on, but they turned out pretty perfect. Ok, let's get the faceplate back on and reinstall all the toggle switches and knobs. First we have to tighten the four nuts that keeps it in place.
that's how it looks with the first cleaned toggle switch and the two knobs installed again. Pretty nice. We are almost done, but I also wanted to give the top cover a quick WD-40 spray. It looks a bit rusty and WD-40 will give it a bit of the original color and shine back. It's not the perfect way to restore it and it's probably not as long lasting as if you would respray it. It's an easy enough fix with a good enough result. All the knobs and switches are back in its place and now it's time to put the cover back on and we are done. Before we are having a look at the end result and test simplifier, I wanted to give you guys a brief look into the history of it and show you a bit of the Pioneer Blue Line. I found our SA508 amplifier in the Pioneer product catalog of 1979-1980. Our amp is 38 years old. In this year it's all about three-dimensional sound. Sounds funny, but it gets more clear when I explain the three dimensions. According to Pioneer, the three dimensions are dynamic range, frequency range and transient response. So the transient response is how the amp codes with rapidly changing signals. All these amplifiers are built according to Pioneer to its own MagniWide design policy. It took me a while to find out what this actually means. It is not explained in this 69 pages long product catalog. In the flyer of the Pioneer SA7800 it is. I don't want to talk in detail about the design policy, but there are 12 different items on it and clearly a lot of engineering went into the design of these amplifiers. Pioneer has overall an impressive product lineup. From the amplifiers, especially the M20 range looks extremely high-end and was certainly in a different price range than our SA508, the M20s, and also the spec range requires a preamp. Many of the components are rack mountable and I will show some pictures later. SA9800 was a top of the range model in this category. It has a lot more options than the SA508 and more power. It got 100 watts. Following models are more and more stripped down with less power. Finally, we are getting into the SA triple digit range. The SA708 is a top model of this subcategory and got 65 watts, and the 508 only got 45. They look already pretty similar to what we got. These amps are also built by following the Magni White design policy and with their blue display also part of Pioneer's blue line. And here is the SF508, it got 25 watts per channel and there's just one other model below him, the 408, which looks a lot smaller and simpler without even a display just delivering a 20 watt. What I found pretty cool was that Pioneer had a lot of rack mountable devices. Racks are even featured in the catalog. Here are some pictures from Pioneer collectors. These racks look really amazing. Cherry on the top would be Pioneer's world famous RT909 reel to reel machine. These go today for more than $2000. The smaller RT707 is a lot cheaper and you should be able to grab one for $800 or less. And there's also the legendary CTF1250 tape deck. I would really love to get one of those. And that's how the end result looks like. You can see the oxidization of the knobs where the silver is no longer as shiny as it was. But the overall result is really good and the amplifier works perfectly. What's just missing is a perfect source to test it and what could be better than the tuner that actually belongs to it. After I was done with the amplifier I also took care of the tuner. Both of them together look even better. I think I've never introduced my real to real machine. Not quite an RT909, but I thought that it's the perfect opportunity for my Fostex E2.
Compared to some modern amplifiers, which are usually equipped with Dolby Surround, the SA508 performed in a different class and I was really pleased. But I can't beat my Sony FA30ES amplifier. And this is already the end of the restoration. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.